Hello everybody and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial and borrowing from two different workshops, Mystical Rulers and Mystical Shapes, to create an incredible medallion. You can use this medallion in open spaces for modern quilts. You can use this medallion in the middle of a block. You can also cut this medallion apart to use in borders by lining them up next to each other. So let's come over to the machine and let me introduce you to a wonderful ruler if you don't already have it in your collection called the Mystical Designer. We're going to be using two different rulers for this particular medallion and we are using the Mystical Designer in medium size in the Day Glow Yellow. It's a fantastic ruler for cutting but also at your long arm for doing some marking like we're going to be doing here. We also are going to be using a set of nested diamonds. So let's get started. Move those aside. Here we are. The one thing I want you to notice about this ruler, for this particular motif, what we're going to be utilizing is the degrees. Here is the center of our ruler, and I have marked a center point right here. I put a blue mark. Make it a little clearer for you. I'm going to line that up in the center, and we are going to be using our A, B, C, D divisions from the center. And the A is going to be, as it says on the ruler, it is the edge of the ruler. So I'm going to make an A mark, which is your vertical line. Then I'm going to turn the ruler, make sure to line that up right on the center. And I'm going to be using the B line. And if you look at the back of the ruler, it says B right on the registration mark. So you never get lost. So now we have our cross. And then I go to mark C. And for mark C, I'm going to slide that, which is actually a 45 degree, which is going to give us a perfect X. And as you see, I've got the 45 degree right on that line. I've lined it up right in the center. Come across with the C, and then I'm going to again turn the ruler again, and I'm going to reline that up on the C line the opposite way. So what we're going to get is a natural asterisk shape. Perfect balance. Now we also have marks D, E, F, and I believe G as well. We can keep dividing this space until we get a complete division, even double what we have here. But for this particular design, this is all we're going to divide, right up to the C. We're now going to bring in our nested diamonds, and for the next portion of this design, we're actually going to mark it all out, and then we're going to subtract any of the lines that we don't want before we actually start quilting this. So I'm going to start with my nested diamonds, and I'm going to go with the smallest diamond in the set. I'm going to line that up right in the center. I make sure my vertical is lined up. I make sure my horizontal is lined up. And you want to make sure to get nested rulers like the ones on our site, which actually has the registration marks right in there. Makes it a lot more convenient and user friendly. Over, so now I have the small one. And now it's a matter of being creative. And so I might turn this sideways, same size, and I'll line up that cross again, again. I'll line that that way, make sure I've lined it this way, that way everything is lined up. I could throw in another small one right here. I won't go all the way, because that would just be another drawn line that I would have to get rid of, because I'm not actually going to use that line in my quilting. And again, this is one of those um, when you improvise type of design. So you're going to play with this until you come up with what you like to have in your design and then you're going to start subtracting the lines and that that's what makes it fun. I'm going to get, grab the next size up and again I might set that there. I like to keep them nested as I add to this size that way I know that they're perfectly lined up in the center. So at this point I could go back to vertical with my length of the diamond. I could add that Again, if I add something that I don't want, then very simply I get rid of the marks, which makes this very convenient. That makes it very, very user friendly. And then I could slide it sideways to continue um, with the design we originally started with. What I could also do now 
as I could face it on the 45. So we make sure again that it lines up dead center. I make sure from length to length, center. And then I go ahead and I add the corner line out, out, and then turn it again. Repeat the same process, make sure my center is lined up for dead center, make sure my edge to edge, boom, boom, diagonal 45, I get this tip, I get the next tip, and then again at that point I could continue on, I could go sideways, I could play with this and come from the center out, which we actually cover a bunch of different options in the um, Mystical Shapes workshop. But we're going to continue just using this particular one and now I'm going to take out the tip so I line that up in the center again boom 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 and then I might add the next diamond line that up stack that on top line up my center try to figure out which way I want to start lining these up and I think since I ended with this one, I'm going to go ahead and add another diamond on the outside. Once we get this all drawn out and start subtracting lines, then we get to go into the whole process of deciding which is positive space and which is negative space, especially after we quilt out all the main lines for this particular design. So now it's just a process of building this out as we go. As you can see, I got rid of a few of the lines that I thought didn't add anything to the design. And therefore, I have an empty spot right here. Now, I may actually echo around here again. What we're going to do is we're going to start right in the center, and I'm going to start with ditch work and treat this just like I would ditch in a pieced quilt. So we're going to start here, do this, and then I will go ahead and do this portion on both sides and then just keep building out. If I need to, I'll just lock and drag if I need to skip areas to go out to the next line. So let's start that. Get rid of my tail. I don't know why, but I've never been able to start quilting with a tail there. So I'm going to bring this over line that up just like I would if it was a pieced ditch and I am going to thicken this line a little bit so once I get down to the bottom of the line I'm going to go back up and back a few times as I work my way around therefore I'm going to have a nice thick line to put my design in. Now the other thing, as I build my way out, I could keep changing thread colors to add more interest to the design. Now since this is simply a tutorial, we're not going to do that. We're going to keep the same thread color in all the way around. So I've got my first line done. I'm going to come back and now I'm going to work my way out to the next section. Back, forth, in, back, in, work my way around again. And I'm using a nice 40 weight polyester thread. Get that tail out of the way. Come up. Start again. And now I'm just going to slide out here and continue building that out. Now. I could continue around here, boom, 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 and then come back up, or I could also come back. Half of the fun of these designs is figuring out how you can get in and out without dragging the thread the least. Out, back, down, back. I like to make a really nice sharp point. I'm going to work my way around again. Back, down, and 
up, back, up, all the way out to the outer edge. We're going to continue this. Now we've come all the way around, so now I have one more to do out here, but I'm gonna just go ahead and drag the thread and lock on and then begin there. So I've dragged my thread. The one thing I don't wanna do, and I'll actually do it here so you understand that, is when I drag thread, I don't drag further than where I'm gonna lock, because then when I move back, I actually have excess of bobbin thread under the machine that could get caught. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyways. Down, up, and just to make sure that I take that fullness away, I actually go ahead and re-drag and grab my bobbin thread and re-lock on. And again, I'm thickening those lines to pop that medallion out. When you go to shows and you see these wonderful medallions on the show quilts, the one thing that you want to notice about them is that a lot of times they thicken the line so that they kind of get that ultra pop. Sometimes with a single line, it can leave it just a little bit flaccid looking. And so you want to add just a little bit to make it oomph, pop it out. Also notice as I'm coming around, sometimes I'm not going exactly on the line that I drew, but sometimes when I look at the line that I drew, initially I see that I'm a little bit off, number one, because it was a little bit of a thicker pen. So when I'm actually sewing, I, I make those adjustments to hopefully bring it back to a little bit more perfection, which was the original intention. So now I've gone completely around. I'm going to pull the machine away and I'm going to actually go ahead and use my um, sew clean and get rid of my blue marks. Then we'll have a blank medallion to actually go in and figure out what we're going to fill and what we're going to leave blank. I've now removed all the blue marks except for the center. I'm going to go ahead and put two lotus feather medallions in these two uh, diamond shapes top to bottom but not next to each other. That way they will pop out and then we'll start doing our relief quilting, positive and negative space. And now, again, I am going to leave this next space open. So what I'm going to do now is slide out to these cornerstones and do the same thing. Put in the um, lotus feather in all four of those.
now we have this portion of our medallion done, now you can make some more decisions on whether or not you want to build it out. I'm actually going to use a couple of our circles and go right in and add some circles and therefore I am going to soften some of the straight lines for this particular medallion. Lock my stitches, continue around, thicken my line so it pops. Lock my stitches, take about four steps back, three steps forward, very small stitches, drag my thread, lock again, and small stitches, come around. Lock my stitches, come around. Again, the handle is helping me keep some leverage on the machine, so therefore, I'm not going to slide the ruler. Come down, lock my stitches. We had an eight and a half, now we're going to grab a nine and a half. Slide that in there. Make sure it's perfectly centered. Slide, drag, lock. And continue around. Back forth to thicken that line. Keep control of your ruler so it doesn't slide. Get rid of my drag tails. Of course, when I remove the quilt, I would then get rid of the drag tails on the bottom. That's not something you want to forget. I can be done there. I could also keep building it out. I could put a lotus right here in these sections and really pop this design out and marry it towards the middle. So there are a lot of options for this particular design. Well, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed that. Now we have another wonderful tool in our tool chest. Have a wonderful day. Take care of each other, and we'll see you down the road.